In this video, I want to go through yet another CFA Level 1 exam style question coming from the Quantitative Methods section of the curriculum, this time focusing on target semi-deviation and semi-variance. Um, so measures which tackle downside potential risk um, in an investment portfolio. If this is something you want to get right in the exam, please keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. The table below provides the annual total returns for five individual client portfolios managed by Sunrise Capital over the past year. The same data that we've heard in previous questions on uh, other measures of dispersion. Assuming a target of uh, a target return, sorry, of two and a half percent, what is the target semi deviation of the returns? Okay. Now the formula for target semi-variance. I'm going to start with target semi-variance and from that we'll go to um, target semi-deviation which we are actually asked about here. So target semi-variance and if you've watched my previous video on um, sample variance and sample standard deviation as well you'll appreciate the relationship between the two. Uh, the standard deviation is variance um, or the square root of variance. Okay, now the formula here is going to be that this is the sum for all observations, which we typically denote as xi, which are equal to or below a certain target. And we'll denote this as b. Okay, now over here, I'm going to have observations minus previously with the formula for simply sample variance we had x bar here the mean but this time I'm going to have that value b which in our case is two and a half percent okay and in the denominator I'm going to have n minus one just like with um, the formula for sample um, sample variance Okay, so essentially what we'll need to do is write out the following for every possible return that we've got over here. So starting with 2%, then uh, 35 then uh, minus 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.3, and finally minus 2.6. I'm going to compute a deviation from the target, but only for those observations that are below the value B. Now the value B is two and a half. So essentially, I'm going to have this one, I'm going to completely ignore this one. So crossing it out intentionally, just so that you see that I'm not actually using everyone. So if previously I said for everyone, that was uh, me going a little bit too fast, I wanted to show you that I omit certain of these. So focusing only on the ones which lie below the two and a half percent target. And for these, computing the square uh, of that deviation over here as well, 2.5% squared over here, minus 2.5% squared. And over here, definitely minus 2.5% squared as well, but not for this one. This one is completely irrelevant. So effectively, out of the five, I'm only using four. Let's take the calculator and compute these deviations squared. Okay, 2 minus 2.5 squared. This is 0.25% squared. Now we ignore this one. So the next one is 0 0.5 negative minus 2.5. Okay, that's going to be 3. If we square this one, it will give 9. That's obviously percent squared. 0 0.3 minus 2.5 squared is 4.84 percent squared and then 2.6 negative minus 2.5 square this okay 26.01 percent squared we need to compute the sum of all these distances squared so 26.01 plus 4.84 plus 9 plus 0 0.25 the total seems to be 
40.1. Okay, let's just recall that this is percent squared. And in order to calculate the, st uh, the target uh, semivariance, we divide by 5 minus 1, so that's 4. Divide this by 4, and I'm looking at an answer of 10.025. This is still expressed as percentages squared. But because this question doesn't ask us for target semi-variance, uh, it asks for target semi-deviation, what I need to do is take the square root of this result. So there's 10.025 percentages squared. And if I do this, we get a result equal to 3.166. And this is expressed in percent. So a unit we can um, kind of easily work with. And as you can see, this corresponds to answer B.